Um, we're living in a time, as you know, of great polarization, and a time when the earth is threatened. And to be able to articulate these issues properly is very difficult in this Tower of Babel, this information age. Uh, the polarization that we experience, I think, creates a sense of anger. I had a bumper sticker for a number of years that said, the truth will set you free, but first it will piss you off. Uh, and many of you here that came to Vilcababa to get away from all of that, and yet many of you have found that here too, <laughs> at various levels. And about all I can say to that is, we need conflict resolution. We need, um, we need to be able to recontextualize some of the issues that lie before us because they're coming up in rapid fire and at all levels, whether it's local, whether it's regional, whether it's national, whether it's international. And we'll be talking about a couple of these because the central issue really is the fact that humans are terribly messing up the earth. I think we can all agree to that. Now, the, the other, uh, the more subsidiary question is, uh, are humans, uh, in, in the act of dumping carbon dioxide and methane into the Earth's atmosphere, greenhouse gases, is that causing global warming, which in turn causes climate change? And people have extreme positions there. Now, oddly enough, my own scientific background is focused on uh, my own background is focused on uh, atmospheric physics and planetary science, so you'd think that I would be an expert. Uh, and in a sense, I am. And my answer to that is kind of disappointing to the polarized people that come to me. Today, I got an email, for example. I, I, a lot of people just casually send me emails and expect me to answer them or support their position which usually turns out to be one extreme or the other. And in this whole global warming climate change, there are many people that are denying that humans have anything to do with it. Uh, and that can be a little misleading, but it can also be, be misleading here on the day of celebrating 350.org about whether or not maybe their message is a bit simplistic. And my answer to that is all of the above. In other words, we're dealing with a Tower of Babel, a, 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 a very confusing set of issues that have been laid out before us and kind of packaged through public relations machines, uh, such as Al Gore's. Now, I, I happen to think that there is an element of anthropogenic or human-caused global warming and climate change. I really believe that's happening. It's obviously happening in terms of polluting the atmosphere and the acid rain and the fact that CO2 emissions have gone up uh, and they're much higher than they have been for a very, very long time. That too has been disputed. But uh, to my best uh, uh, calculation, it's, it's at least several million years. And that that CO2, whether it causes the global warming or not, is, uh, is causing acid rain and it's causing um, uh, the acidification of the oceans and the death of sea life all over the world. So we're dealing with global issues that we need to keep aware of in a community like this. It, it, it's, it's like everything. We have to look at everything we, and reconceptualize what the issues are. Now, the email I got today was a very angry one. And I seem to be getting more and more angry emails, whether they have to deal with local issues, whether, or national issues or international issues. And uh, this particular email, it, it was like 10 pages long, and it was personal to me. And the guy is forcing, trying to force an answer out of me is, don't you agree with my point of view? Global warming is a big hoax. Don't, don't you understand that? And you see what's happening is, and, and that happened also, I was on a US radio show about two months ago, and we couldn't get beyond that debate. He was arguing that it was a big hoax. I was arguing, well, it's more complicated than that. You see, my reason for backing out of this debate is not only diplomacy, which is always a good thing to do, 
but as also as a scientist, I realize that these issues are incredibly complex. And so many people that are not trained in this area will take a position and run with it. And now there's some psychological studies that have been done on this whole question of the denial of various uh, truths. And we've seen this in 9-11 truth. We're seeing it also in so-called free energy truth, which I, I see as a solution if it's properly managed. Uh, globally to our energy environment crisis. It's a very uh, robust solution, and yet there's great denial about this, even among the Bill McKibbins or the Jim Hansons and some of the other people that are speaking out today in favor of cutting way back on our carbon dioxide emissions. And I think that that actually, if I were to adopt the precautionary principle, and that's not a bad principle, I, I would say let's stop burning oil, coal, and natural gas, and let's get on with clean energy. And that's my, that's my position right now. And let's get beyond these, these contentious debates, which are just microcosms of macrocosms. And, uh, it, you know, it's very clear there are other reasons to cut way back on the burning of hydrocarbons. For one thing, the country that we're in right now, Ecuador, is in an oil-rich zone. And 12 days of the world's oil could be produced from a particular oil block in Yasuni National Park, which is at the very eastern end of Ecuador. This is a block that's about one million hectares, and there's about a billion barrels of oil under the ground there. And yet there's a silly law right now in Ecuador that says well, you can go for the resources under the ground, you just can't disturb above the ground. But as you know, the Chevron Texaco controversy here, which we think is coming to a head, this is a $27 billion lawsuit by the indigenous people that have been very severely affected by oil spills and the pollution of their water and the killing of their people and the total devastation of their habitat. Uh, that's happened during the 1970s into the 80s. And now since then, for 16 years, there has been this pending lawsuit for $27 billion to collect from Chevron Texaco. And now Chevron Texaco is doing everything to manipulate this, this. But the point I'm trying to make here is that there is a very serious threat, not only to the, the, the whole world in terms of global warming, climate change, global cooling, whatever you want to call it, whether it's anthropogenic or natural, the point is that we have a problem on this planet.